A truly great carpet is one that has a charisma, a wonderful essence that is recreated through technical ability, an understanding of design and aesthetic created through high quality materials. The carpet that we see here today was woven during the Safavid Empire, which was started at the beginning of the 16th century and continued all the way through until 1722. This carpet was woven most likely in Kazvin, probably around 1560 to 1570, towards the end of the reign of Shah Tabmas in the court workshops of the capital at the time. Court carpets were not purely woven for the floor. These were majestic works of art created to show the wealth of the patron. They were woven with the finest materials, the greatest dyes and the finest weavers. They were woven also as ambassadorial gifts, so they would have been gifted to visiting dignitaries to show the wealth of the court and the ability of the artist that worked for the Shah. One of the most wonderful and striking aspects of this carpet is its palette. The preservation of all of the colours within the palette is extraordinary. They would have been set with a mordant and have faded very little, so the weavers in the 16th century, how they understood how to fix and make stable these dyes, has preserved them to a level which has belied their age. It's not really until you're up close and personal that you really get to see and feel what the carpets are about. This kaleidoscope of colour really comes to light and what is truly wonderful, in my opinion, is the wonderful way that the weavers have used the counterbalance and counterpose designs within one leaf. In amongst these colourful pomets, what we're seeing are these concentric spiralling vines that travel through the carpet. You also see the suggestion of these whip-like cloud bands. They've got these wonderful small little wisp-like tails that travel off at either end. But perhaps the most unusual thing that we have are the inclusion of these paired and singular birds. They're widely considered to be pheasants with these long tail feathers. The pile has this wonderfully soft wool, which is very, very finely spun. That is woven onto a cotton and a silk structure. Silk was the most expensive material and would only have been used in the court by the Shah. And it was only used by the finest weavers because it was so expensive. Having traveled from Iran in the 16th century under the rules of the Shahs, this carpet made its way through to Europe into the collection of Edmund de Rothschild at the end of the 19th century. The Rothschild family are synonymous with this wonderful taste of the Orient, these luxurious textiles and carpets that we see in the paintings of the interiors of their houses at the time. Edmund de Rothschild had a fantastic collection of Oriental carpets, and we see many of them depicted in his house, which was bought in 1876 in Paris, the Hotel de Pontalba, which is the American embassy today. What is most interesting, I think, when looking at a carpet is not always the face. When you turn a carpet over, you reveal its fingerprint, its characters and its flaws, but also its structure. Here, quite clearly, you have the remains of the silk warps that are just coming out at the ends underneath this tape. Because the warps are silk, it allows the weavers to create this much finer curve. This allows a design to be created that has a much more curvilinear form, much less geometric, much less angular. And this was the first time this was really being created. We're moving into the Safavid vocabulary, which really became a characteristic of the dynasty and of its designs. These works of art are the collector's dream. The carpets bring to life a collection. They have a story behind them other works of art can't perhaps portray. 